Galaxies of Fire and the First Contradictions A few pages deeper into the endless cosmic chronicle, the James Webb Space Telescope slowly unfurls its golden eye. Its golden mirrors spread open like petals of light, catching the faintest whispers from the edge of time. It stretches its vision across billions upon billions of light years, piercing the darkness of the ancient sky. Every photon it gathers has traveled longer than human history itself, carrying stories older than Earth, older than the Sun, older than life. And then, its gaze locks upon a blazing furnace of creation. A galaxy known as GSZ-140. It is not quiet. It is not small. It is a beacon of furious energy, flaring into existence less than 300 million years after the fiery birth of the cosmos, the Big Bang. The universe at this stage should still be young, quiet, and unsettled. Stars should only just be beginning to ignite. Galaxies should still be forming as fragile clusters of gas and dust. But GSZ-140 is different. It is already alive with motion. Already burning with impossible strength. Compact yet immensely powerful, it compresses nearly half a billion suns into its glowing heart. Each star burns with a violence unmatched, pouring its light into the dark fabric of space. Together, their brilliance collides, bursting outward like a storm of sparks from the furnace of creation. It is as though the galaxy itself is on fire, its core a roaring forge, its light echoing across time. This is not a place of silence. It is not gentle. It is not patient. It is raw, unrestrained energy. A storm of stars. A crucible where creation and destruction blend together. To gaze upon GSZ-140 is to stare directly into the heart of cosmic violence. Yet brightness alone is not what leaves scientists shaken. The true astonishment lies hidden in its chemistry. Here, within the furnace of this young galaxy, Webb detects oxygen. Oxygen, breath of life. Oxygen, born in the death throes of elder stars. Oxygen, an element that, by every model, should not yet exist. And yet here it is, shining faintly in the spectrum of light, carved into the fabric of starlight itself. It should not exist this soon. Not within only a few hundred million years of the universe's awakening. By every rule, it is impossible. Its presence is a contradiction, a riddle written in flame. GSZ-140 did not crawl through cosmic infancy. It sprinted. It raced forward, transforming hydrogen, the universe's simplest element, its very first breath, into heavier atoms with astonishing speed. It leapt ahead of schedule, forging oxygen before the universe should have been ready. For scientists, this is more than a surprise. It is a revolution. It means the early cosmos was not the slow, delicate process they once believed. It was fast. It was violent. It was relentless. Galaxies like GSZ-140 were not fragile infants. They were titans, roaring into existence with impossible maturity. And if one such galaxy exists, how many more are hidden across the vast canvas of space? How many others sprinted through their youth, rewriting the rules of cosmic growth? Each new discovery adds weight to the same truth. The early universe was stranger, fiercer, and more alive than anyone imagined. GSZ-140 is not just a galaxy. It is a message from the dawn of time. A signal carved into the first light of creation. It tells us that the story of the universe is not one of gentle beginnings, but of fire, speed, and upheaval. The early universe was not calm. It was not kind. It was not patient. It was a battlefield of light and fire, where galaxies were born screaming into existence. In GSZ-140, burning with impossible oxygen, 
stanzas proof that creation was never slow. It was a fury, shadows, orbits, and the fragile truth of worlds, then web shifts its golden mirrors once more. It drifts its gaze away from mighty galaxies and turns towards something smaller, something humbler. A brown dwarf, an object that tried to be a star, but never fully became one. Often dismissed as a cosmic failure, a half-born son of the stars, it now reveals secrets hidden beneath its dim glow. Through Webb's vision, methane flickers through its heavy atmosphere. Auroras shimmer faintly, rippling across its surface as though invisible hands are painting strokes of luminous color onto the dark canvas of space. These strange signals whisper of something more, a hidden companion, an unseen exomoon. It cannot be seen directly, yet it betrays itself. It pulls and tugs at the dwarf's magnetic field, leaving behind ripples of light like ghostly footprints across cosmic sand. A world revealed not by its body, but by its influence. Here Webb teaches us something profound. The universe is not silent. It is not empty. It is full of companions hiding in shadows, worlds waiting to be discovered, their presence betrayed only by the faintest traces of light. Further still, Webb peers at 14 Hercules, a cold giant planet locked in a dangerous, chaotic dance. Its orbit is tilted, unstable, broken, a scar left by ancient violence. Perhaps a wandering interloper once passed too close. Perhaps a sibling star tugged it off balance. Whatever the cause, the planet is now a prisoner of disorder, circling endlessly in cosmic turmoil. And then Webb witnesses something even more unsettling. The death spiral of a giant world. Once steady, once proud in its orbit, this Jupiter-sized planet now falls helplessly toward its parent star. Gravity tightens around it with every orbit. Each revolution brings it closer to destruction. Soon tidal forces will tear it apart, ripping away its atmosphere, stripping its layers, until nothing remains but faint whispers of gas consumed by fire. This vision shatters one of humanity's oldest illusions, that planets, once born, endure forever. But permanence does not exist in the universe. Worlds can vanish without sound, swallowed in silence, their stories erased in fire. Taken together, the hidden exomoon, the impossible oxygen of GSZ-140, the chaos of 14 Hercules, and the suicidal plunge of a doomed planet, they weave into one undeniable truth. The universe is restless. The universe is unpredictable. The universe is violent. What once seemed like a calm, clockwork machine now stands revealed as a stage of constant upheaval. Stars ignite in violent bursts of nuclear fire. Galaxies collide and bloom in storms of dust and radiation. Planets stumble into unstable paths or spiral to their fiery graves. Even black holes, once thought to grow slowly, erupt in infancy, hungry giants shaping the galaxies around them. Closer to home, Webb uncovers icy belts circling distant suns, raw seeds waiting to form planets not yet born. It reveals galaxies colliding, their violent embrace birthing black holes not at their centers but in the chaos between their crashing hearts. It shows spiral galaxies already forming shockingly early, their elegant arms stretching across the young cosmos long before theories said they should exist. The story that emerges is not slow and orderly. It is a story of speed. A story of fire. A story of ruin. Black holes blaze like wildfires. Galaxies bloom and collapse. Planets flare briefly, then vanish. The universe is not calm. It is a forge. And in this vision, Earth itself feels fragile a rare sanctuary of balance. A delicate refuge in a cosmos where elsewhere, stars devour planets, and galaxies ignite like storms. Webb is not merely an observer. It is a storyteller. 
Every ancient photon it captures is a memory, billions of years old. Each spectrum is a song of creation or destruction. Each flicker of light is the echo of a truth that predates humanity. And as Webb peers deeper still, one haunting question lingers. Not only what will it see next, but how will humanity adapt when the universe itself refuses to obey?